We had no idea what kind of shape the house was in. If it looks like a mess, it's a mess and it's done wrong. It was the worst inspection that could ever have possibly been done. He had someone to fix all these problems too, so he was giving us references and seemed to be a quite extensive family. That noise is driving me nuts. What is that noise? <laughs> Laura Lee and Shane were looking for a nice house in the right neighborhood, and I think they found it. They did all, all the right things. Brought in a home inspector, minor things happening. Two thumbs up, the house is great. Well, it's not great. There's problems. Obviously, I'm here. I'm going to have to take a look just to see what he looked at, what he missed, and what I'm going to have to do to fix things. When we started looking for a house, we knew this was the particular neighborhood we wanted to be in. It's close to the boardwalk, it's close to the lake, and it's um, only a 10 minute commute for Shane and myself to go to work. So it was the perfect area to be living in. It was a raised bungalow and it had a two car garage and there was five bedrooms and a, a finished basement and a really, really great big backyard, which is all the things we were looking for as a, a starter home for our, for our family. When we moved into the house, we knew that we wanted to renovate the kitchen because it was pretty much original. It was 30 years old. None of the appliances were, the cupboards were old. So that's where we knew our savings were gonna go to. And based on the inspection report that didn't say there were any other major issues that we'd need to spend money on, we decided that's what we were gonna do. He was assuring us that his qualifications of an engineer and everything else were sufficient and that we were getting the best possible inspection that we could get. Um, and in lieu of that, we've soon discovered that that wasn't necessarily the case. Laura Lee? Yes, hi Mike. Nice to meet you, nice must be Shane. Hi Mike, nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, I love back splits. Okay, we do have a finished Rec room, right. nice. Yeah. Bar. Shane actually did a repair to the vent in order to allow uh, hot air in here because it was staying trapped above the ceiling. Good for you for catching that. And it's simply because it's cold and you start yeah. going, hey, something's yeah. wrong yeah. here. Yeah. Simply move the towel. You do yeah. this, you put fingerprints on the tiles, right? right. And okay. you don't want a homeowner going, you put fingerprints all over all my, my tiles. tiles. Back of your hands. Uh -oh. okay. Nice and clean. I've noticed that the, the drop down ceiling is actually three inches lower than it needs to be. And if you look at the top of the, the windows, they're actually cut off. This ceiling was not done by a professional. No. no. I can tell you right now. Why? I looked down. These are your cross tees. These are your main tees. The cross tees do not line up perfectly all the way down. You see how sloppy that is? Yeah. That tells me somebody was probably, homeowners can do this. This yeah. is a DIY thing. Yeah. It is down three inches. It says in the instructions, must have three inches. Why? So we can get these solid tiles in and out. Right. You need that room to actually get the tiles in and out unless you use a flex tile, which okay. is around an inch and a half to two inches drop. It also explains the window drop, okay? So they did, somebody did a wood finish here just to bring them down. It's not a terrible thing. What is a terrible thing is not extending the heat down. So that's an issue. When we had moved into the house, the first winter we were here was when we first really started to experience um, the problems that were happening, the downstairs heating being broken. I don't see a register in the ceiling. It's not in the report. Why don't I see a register in the ceiling? All right, I do see junction points, which is fine, because this is a lowered ceiling, so it's a suspended ceiling. So far, I don't see any duct work. I don't see any duct work. Why? The home inspector actually missed something very important. No heat in this room, no heat upstairs. This is Shane's office, and there's no heat that comes up through that You have register. no heat through that register, no. none, no. none. In my home office space, this also translates into my home practice room and, and mini studio. I have to make sure, especially with some of my instruments, that they're packed away within their cases, because if I leave them out um, because of the quality of the wood, they can crack. When we moved in, every window in the house was broken. So all the latches were broken off of them and there were steel rods holding them in place. Um, water comes in from them if the rain is driving in a certain direction. These are the things that home inspectors should be looking for. I read nothing about this in the report at all. That's right, he didn't say anything I'd like about to it. see a picture of this. Talk about it, that water's come in. It's the old style windows. Okay. 
Madison doesn't sleep in her nursery because the window is, is broken and I'm not gonna leave her in there by herself at night um, when we're in a, a completely separate room. So her crib is now in our room and uh, that's where the three of us stay. So. Nice little house, man. You got squeaky floors. I hate squeaky <laughs> floors. So. so no exhaust fan, door to you. Oh, we have exhaust fan in the... Other room. The washroom area, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the toilet area. <laughs> yeah. Most importantly, we want to pull out the humidity from the shower. Right. This is why you have surface mold in here. We clean that bathroom so often because that's where we bathe Madison, and we can't stay ahead of the mold that grows in there. Any other issues down here? Yes. Yes. One more. During one of the major rainstorms, we noticed that we basically, on our rain spouts, uh, were basically having a flood in our uh, basement laundry room. That particular issue actually really angers me because when we were outside with the inspector, we pointed that out to him and we said, the eaves troughs look like they're bent. Is that going to be a problem? And he said, absolutely not. It'll still hold the water. It'll still drain the way it's supposed to drain. And the water actually just gushes over the side of both of them pools on the bottom and then leaks into the house. So there was nothing about it in the report. All right, I've seen enough with you. I'm gonna go through the rest of the house by myself. I'm gonna take a good look and I'm gonna bring you back and tell you what I find. And I'm gonna get Damon probably to open up all kinds of things. And I'll show you what I find, I'll fix it. I'll make it right. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You so My much. pleasure. I really appreciate Great it. Great meeting you. Once it's warmer down there, it'll be nice to be able to take Madison down there and play with her because I can't do it right now unless she's in a coat. You know, maybe I'll bring my drums and we'll play. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I don't mind. Really mind, but I don't mind. I've got some I'm extra kidding. drums upstairs, too. Oh, you, you do? want some hand drums. Okay. <laughs> you play the bongos? <laughs> no, I just belly dance. That's it. Just belly dance? <laughs> <laughs> what a mix. <laughs> We're going to make it right together. Was this tile left out when you saw this house? He, he actually moved that tile. Yeah. Oh, he moved this yeah. tile. Yeah. He opened it, he looked up, and he's like, oh, yeah, no, that's fine. Oh, no, yeah. that's not fine. And since he pulled this tile down, he should pull down a lot more tiles and take a look. When we had moved into the house, the first winter we were here was when we first really started to experience um, the problems that were were happening, the downstairs heating being broken, and um, I was pregnant at the time, and it was just one worry after another, and I was already having a, a pregnancy that, you know, had a little bit of trouble to it, so I didn't need the extra worries happening. Here we go. I'm gonna start in here simply because we have no heat here, and I'm gonna pull down a few tiles. Why is there no heat in this room? It's not even connected. I will figure it out. Okay, so that main trunk comes across here, right across the ceiling. They're gonna come off that main trunk, they're gonna come through, have a 90 elbow, a run across here. That's 190, that's 290s, that's 390s, that's 490s. 490s, four times eight is 32. That's the equivalent to an extra 32 feet of duct line. The furnace is two thirds of the way up the back of the house. Add that equivalent and run, we don't have enough airflow. What we wanna make sure is that we have insulation in the ends, which we do. So that's all good. I don't care if there's no vapor barrier. It doesn't meet minimum code today for whenever this was done. As far as I see the insulation, I'm fine. how dirty that is. Air movement, what we don't see in our air. That's barely even in there. So that should have been addressed. Sounds like there's a bunch of frogs in there. That would drive me insane, sleeping upstairs. It's always something new. Definitely don't like the pipe cat. Got some tissue in there. Stop the methane gases from getting in the house. You think that stops it? Wires are properly clipped that I see in the box. That's correct. So we do have lines that are not stapled, which means some of this work, the spaghetti factory of cable lines and electrical, was done without a permit, I'm gonna assume. Look at that, eh? Smart people. Mr. Bennett. My Timing's age. everything. Follow me. All right. uh, Those are going, aren't they? Yeah, there's no <laughs> locks on the windows. They're leaking. 
We have a wood sill that shows us being the, the actual wood's being absorbed. Water is absorbing it and it's flaking up the paint. Is it an issue? Minor, yes. Will it eventually get inside? The answer is yes. Should they have new windows? The answer is yes. That was three yeses in a row, eh? See the black? Yes, I do. Not a good sign. I want you to go up in the attic. I want to check the ventilation. I want to check to see if we have issues with mold. Uh, since Steve is here, let's look at it to see what we need to do, because I got a bad feeling. OK. And I hate my bad feelings. There's an issue. That box is not attached to the wall. That's a bad sign. How much electricity runs through here? Lots. I'm not even going to mess with this, but I will be calling in Frank. Ooh, okay. Let's make sure that we take advantage of these. Let's get one somewhere else, one here, and have the downspouts run in. OK. Don't run your electrical through the freaking ductwork. Jesus, what's the matter with people? I love to do that, by the way. We have a minor complaint from the homeowners from that downspout right there. That's an awful lot of water that comes to all the sea straw around the house, which forces all that water down here as much as possible and goes down to the weeper. That's got to come out of there. It needs to be relocated, as far as I'm concerned, all new east troughs and downspouts throughout the house. Let's go inside. i got all kinds of things to show you. OK. Now, the fireplace upstairs. Yeah. Let's uh, bring in a wet certified person to con just ensure that it's in fine working condition. The only time that a home inspector can say this is fine is if he's wet certified. Not for water, OK? It's W-E-T-T. -T. It is a certification within the fire industry, within fireplaces. And if he's not wet certified, you can't tell someone it's fine to use the fireplace. Have it checked. Wood burning fireplace is the number one fire problem within a home. Have it checked. Okay. So, bros, we need heat running in this yep. room. We need all this connected, redone. Okay. Since Frank's in, let's have him check everything. I haven't seen a lot in electrical, but enough to say there's issues. In the laundry room, I pulled down a lot of the ceiling. Sorry, pardon me, excuse me. Due to it being completely dangerous, and I'll explain why. See what they've done? I bent that one back. They didn't lock it in the main. Right. Here's a connection point here, here, here. And it's increments of six inches. This is supposed to lock into that area, right? And the other one locks into that, and they won't come out again. It's really, really a good system, providing you do it right. These lines do not line up to the other one, which means whoever did the main tease, they don't know how to do it. They just cut it and fed it. And no wonder they bent all these, because they wouldn't have locked into place. This is a gas water heater. We have a Y here. I'm yep. a little concerned with the Y, and I want to confirm everything's fine. Especially with that. Yeah, yeah. especially with that. The inspector should have caught that, so shame on him. Yep. That wasn't so bad. One sheet of paper this time. Not bad. Keep up the good work. Well, that's the start. <laughs> Let's see where it goes from there. He had said he'd done, you know, many houses, yeah. uh, the inspections on, like, hundreds of houses. and See, that makes me job. nervous, because if he missed all this, what did he miss in the other houses? OK, first day here after meeting with Mike. Now, we're going to drop all the ceiling tiles today, because we have a big day with trades today. I have electrical coming in today to check out all the wiring. I have the plumbers coming today, and I also have HVAC coming today. Everyone needs to see beyond this point. So we're going to start by protecting everything today and then start on the tiles. Just getting into it. I'm ready. Watch the rock. Come on in, Martin. Thanks for coming by on a rainy day. Hey, anytime. Mike just wants a thorough investigation of this fireplace. It's part of our inspection, so we just want to make sure that it meets with code. OK. Tell me what you're going to do with it. We're going to double check, make sure uh, things are good. We've got enough hearth clearance out front. So you can tell by the grills that it's a heat form fireplace. Right. I want to make sure nobody's living in there. It's never good to see a pair of eyes looking back at you. <laughs> it's, it's always a bad sign. I can see some water staining. So somewhere at the top, we do have some water coming in. It's most likely either a cracked tile at the very top or just some uh, masonry that's deteriorated. At the moment, uh, it's a little dirty on the inside. But other than that, I don't see any major issues. Um, everything from first appearance looks really good down here. Maybe go outside and dust myself off a little. So we've got perfect weather today on with a little bit of rain. We can see we've got cracks in the crown. But we can also see wet and dry spots on the chimney. The trigger of this 
is the drip edge, the indentation on the underside of the concrete cap here is not far enough away from the brick. I believe the three tiles below this top one are all cracked, which isn't exactly what we wanted to see. They look like just hairlines, but even a hairline crack once heated can open up as much as a full centimeter. Now, worst case scenario is always chimney fire. Heat and smoke migration through the voids leads to creosote buildup and increased risk of fire in any areas the chimney runs through. So you're saying that this thing could either explode or fall in and on itself just by having a cracked flue? Yes. That is unbelievable. And now I understand your recommendation on why they have to be replaced. A lot of people want the fan on the bathroom side <laughs> for obvious reasons, but you also need it on the shower side. You have a bathroom that creates steam, um, and it's separated, it's two fans. Fan for the toilet side, fan for the shower side. If it gets cold anymore, you can't use the window as a venting purpose for a bathroom. Gas lines look pretty good. I don't see any illegal connections other than these copper fittings. What about the T uh, connection right here? The T connection's fine, but the thing I like the best about this is this tank was replaced two years ago. This venting's no longer allowed. You can't use aluminum venting anymore. Is that right? So this needs to be replaced. Another quick one, uh, it's just a simple, you know, pipe that's not connected, so we gotta get that connected, get some air, figure out where it's going to. And you notice, obviously, the dryer line, it's looping like this, it's uninsulated, heat meeting cold, bringing in condensation, and the yeah. water will sit in that elbow, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what else, bud, um, anything else? In the room over here, we got a couple uh, heating runs. Walk in here, you already feel that it's cold, so it's looking like getting a heating run in this room. Uh, it's gonna be opening up some drywall ceilings, some walls, figuring out how to get something in here. So, and then we're gonna have a small opening in this wall for a return, because I've noticed nowhere in this basement is a return air. All right, so we have some work to do for you. There's a lot of moisture coming through here. You have a lot of water stains in this area. They've noticed water stains coming down here. All right. Uh, so I want you to open up this whole thing. Look at the amount of mold on this thing. Look at that all the way up here. If I already looked upstairs, there's no way to get into that stack without ripping off some tile. Okay. which I do not want to do. There's the new kitchen on one side and we have the bathtub on the other. If it's manageable from here, what I can do is I can cut all this out and having slight access, I can just replumb everything, right? That's a great idea. All right, awesome. thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have some mold issues on the uh, roof, which is not a big deal. It's a surface mold because there's absolutely no venting. I do see a couple of leaks. I see some wet spots up there that I want Steve Grays to check out next. The roof is undervented. We've got large 75 square inch roof vents, but there's only three of them. Based on the size of the roof, there should have been about four of them or five to six regular sized vents. So we'll have to add some more vents. Allowing proper amount of ventilation is gonna prevent any condensation or moisture issues in the attic. It'll extend the life of the structure, the wood itself, as well as the shingles on the roof. This roof uh, is relatively new. We wanna maximize the life of those shingles. As you can see here, we've got the, a ridge vent installed. Basically what it is is an extruded plastic product that flex fits to the various pitches of the roof. It's right at the peak of the roof. It helps exhaust that air uh, more efficiently, more effectively. Mr. Graves, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? You are a good guy, you know that, eh? Thanks, Mike. You are, you are a good guy. See, he doesn't even turn around, he just keeps working. Yeah, he's busy. <laughs> good good job, guys, thanks, Damon. All right, buddy. Any issues? You. I'll call you. As a certified technician, as soon as I see cracked flue tiles, I have to say that 
the chimney and the fireplace should not be used as is. So we have a cracked liner, a cracked flue, which means they cannot use it. When it's heated up, it expands right. to up to a half inch, fire gets out. And right. he said that chimney, when heated with that much fire, will actually explode or fire. implode. This is not the best wood burning fireplace anyway, so let's go ahead, let's get aim okay. back, and let's pull it out. Let's do a proper liner in the Excellent. chimney. Let's make it good. Gary, how are you, buddy? Not bad, and yourself? What time no see? Uh, this one's minor, right? Yeah. So just some minutes. sloppy work and a little bit of cleanup will fix it. Yeah, oh, yeah. At least the homeowner, you know, he's the one that figured it out, that the heat was, like, heating the floor and not coming down. So he extended <laughs> that the... Uh, yes, that's actually what that's he did. That's exactly what he did. Wrong tape, but... Yeah. It's creative. <laughs> Let's side and take a look. Thanks, Gear. No problem. Keep making it right, buddy. <laughs> Let's bring the homeowners through, let them uh, see what they need to see, and then we'll make it right. So as you can see, we like to protect the house. Yeah. I want to talk about the fireplace for a second, because in the report, the home inspector actually said the fireplace is fine. You can use the fireplace. Right. Uh, did you ask him if he was certified to look at a fireplace? No. no. We didn't even know to ask that question. OK. Well, now you do, because that fireplace you can't use. There's a crack in the flute, and it's no longer any good, so you cannot use it. We've used the fireplace since we've moved in as a wood-burning fireplace with no idea whatsoever that there could have been a fire. We have people working on the back. Steve Graves is there. We're going to be doing a whole new uh, fascia soffit, new east draft, new downspouts, kick them out, avoid the leaks that we have in the basement. Wonderful. And that's all coming from the downspout. The blue room. Oh, wow. OK. <laughs> It's very different without that hideous... Well, this is the room without the heat, and yes. it was very simply understood. What happened when somebody did the renovation here, all the heat runs were proper and standard to the house, within reason, okay? okay. They, you know, they dropped the ceiling, they didn't drop the ductwork like you did. Yes. <laughs> when they put this wall up, the register's on the other side of that wall in your wonderful bar area, and they didn't bring it into this room. So it was missed by the inspector. There is no heat. We're easily going to fix this by bringing it into this room. Your panel. We're going to bring in Frank. They've done a lot of electrical searching. And go ahead, Damon, you say what these found. Right now, you are maxed out in terms of the circuits you can put in that thing. And it's for future use. If you guys ever want to add anything, you have no dedicated lines. They're going to dedicate some lines for you on that, and they have no room to go. So they're going to give you a panel with some more space. But I want to talk about more electrical, like the lights in here, you know, the amateur work, how we see the junction points and all the ties. And it's, it's not terrible. It's just not right. We're going to pull a permit. We're going to check everything. And once that's closed off, that means this house is safe electrically. Okay. You know, the right people are in here. But this light. You know, you don't put it up with drywall screws. Now, I'm not even going to pull on that, because I guarantee all I have to do is grab that light and do it's this. Gonna and, and this is, is going to come down. light in the basement. The other ones were worse. Basically, as a homeowner, if it looks like a mess, it's a mess, and it's done wrong. Somewhere above this area, we have a leak. And it is in the main stack itself. We're going to try and figure out whether it's, it's coming from the sink that ties into the stack. We do have a long run from this point over to the wall. Somebody's done something, and we don't have air behind water here. So we don't have enough air. It is catching air because it's close to the snack, but when it comes to the codes, it's not within minimum code. The home inspection was worth nothing, yeah. in all honesty. I mean, it's so disheartening that you pay the money expecting a professional to be a professional and to know his job, and then finding out later anybody can be a home inspector. Now, I don't want to say this inspector doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. Unfortunately, I'm going to say they don't know enough. Yeah. And then that's not a good thing, because the little things we found become dangerous, become very expensive. And if we look at everything we're about to do in your home, you're in the 60 grand range. With $60,000 of extra work that has to occur to the yeah. house, that's just, you know. it's unbelievable to yeah. me that they can get away with doing what they're doing. Absolutely. Now, this drain is still driving me yeah. insane. <laughs> Because yeah. I still hear yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> what did Martin say? <laughs> Changing everything from the tap over. It's the tap is faulty at this point. So oh, I was going to replace that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No big deal, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. You keep smiling. You're going to have to stay out of the house for a bit because it's going to okay. be uncomfortable. No problem. We'll make it right. All right. We will. We trust you will. There's a big weight lifted off of you because you know it's going to be fixed and it's going to be fixed correctly. Absolutely. And we can go and actually live and enjoy living in yeah. the house. You're yeah. not going to be scared about it anymore. Done right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gary, how's it going, man? Good, man. Getting the heating run in. Good. Yeah, you are getting that in. That's nice. You're almost done this side. Yeah. You have any issues so far? We got one. I need to get the heating run into that room in the front. Yeah. 
It's looking like we may have to bust open that closet. I see. Oh, my. That is a lot of food. We got to move. <laughs> There you go. There's no job small enough for me. This is the moment. <laughs> Heat in the room. Pretty good flow, I'd say. Nice, warm room. Very nice. nice. I'm putting a shut off on this connection here. You can see the old connection doesn't have one. And these copper lines, you're not allowed to use these anymore. They're against code. So it's removing these copper lines, putting in a shut off. I'm not a big copper fan, so I use a different product. I think it's a lot easier. It's aluminum flexible with some rubber coating on it. Just a lot easier to work with. So that's the culprit. Once I opened it up, I discovered that this MG coupling is not even applied properly. So those clamps are not actually holding the, the rubber piece Properly. Well, this one would be, but this one's not on anything. That's exactly, that's just, that just holds the ABS and it's obviously not a watertight. So what I ended up doing is um, I applied ABS coupling, uh, which was glued into the uh, existing ABS pipe. Uh, that gives me a permanent connection uh, without any potential for leaks. We've got a loose meter base that's coming off the foundation of the house and it's the uh, homeowner's responsibility to have that fastened with uh, an electrician. We've isolated the power to this home, pulled our meter off, and we've checked that we have zero voltage in our meter base. It's all good to go. Right now, for the next couple of hours, we're running on generator. So hopefully we got enough gas. Minor electrical issues, lots of junction points in the house. Uh, minor, nothing major, but one thing that was found with your microwave. When you have a microwave, you never put the cord underneath it. They have vents that come out from underneath the microwave and it melts your wires. You have exposed wires on your microwave line at this point. Good morning, Joe. How are you? Hi, David. How you doing? You can see all the windows are coming out today. All wooden jams rotting right out. They need to be replaced. We have some water damage here on the drywall for the leakage through the window. No weather stripping whatsoever on it. The most important thing about installing a window over a door is to apply drip cap underneath the window above the door prevent water from seeping through behind the door. Very important, not many people do that these days. Hey boys, is this baby Madison's window? Yes, it is. Well, it's a good thing we're replacing these windows. They were very nervous about the windows that were in place. Um, as you saw, they used all these little sticks and stuff to, yeah, for safety, right? They, there was no latches on there. There's no safety features on these windows anymore at all. These windows are all forced entry proof. Once it locks, it locks automatically and this will latch will not open. And you have to release this button for them to open or else they will never open from the inside. It looks great, buddy. Nice job, guys. All right, thank Thanks, you. bud. The house is approximately 40 years old. The plywood soffit was the standard then. Now we use pre-painted aluminum to finish the eaves. That way it's maintenance free. We're gonna remove all these existing eaves troughs. We'll be installing new seamless troughs. But with a single hand seam miter in the corner versus a factory corner and that really should minimize any problems. Looks like it's been leaking since day one. We've got only a small two by three downpipe. We'll go with a large downpipe right. instead. Because we have a lot of east rock here and really only two locations for downpipe. 
And I see they have two rain barrels that we can use to disperse the water at the two new locations and extend the downspouts right into the yard. As long as we can get it to the property line, you know, these uh, these bushes will soak up a lot yeah. of that water. Right. Um, and then the rain barrel and the uh, in the nicer weather, they can utilize the, the rainwater for gardening and, right, and that's whatever else they want to do. Well, the reason why I'm rewiring the bathroom, we could have left the junction box in the ceiling and put an access panel. Problem is, it's over a shower. Uh, we're going to have moisture getting there if we have an access panel. We got the ceilings open. Let's just fix it. If you do have to have a junction box, make sure to leave an access panel. Because even though we're electricians, we're not magicians. We cannot see behind walls. What we see here is where the cavity of the flue tile that's supposed to come all the way down be self-supported just above the opening here to the heat form. You can see the detailing here. Uh, so you've got three sides of flat ledge in a hidden area uh, to absorb and contain creosote. Um, if nesting were to come down, none of that stuff's supposed to be there. This is supposed to be a nice smooth transition so everything comes down the chimney, goes into the heat form so it can easily be removed. Down just a bit, a little more. That's good. This is what I've discussed with Mike, and I really like the idea, actually, is we're going to actually give them a drywall ceiling in here. We're going to bring it up past the height that they originally had it. You can see the line where their T-bar ceiling originally was. Yeah. I want to get it up a little bit higher. We're going to give them nice pot lights. And at the end of it, we're going to give them a nice little built-in behind that bar. Nice. Make it feel a little bit more homey than it already was. What I've done is I've actually centered them to the bar, yeah. not the actual opening. Right. So you got the lights that come down center the bar. Area. That looks really good. And the lights are a little bit spaced out. They're not straight down the middle. It's looking really good. I'm really yeah. happy so with it. So we're almost done in this room, and you can start drywalling. Thank you so. very much, buddy. So no access panels on the ceiling? No access panels whatsoever. Let's get it in. We still have a lot of work to do. It makes me a little nervous, but it's not anything we have never done before. So a lot of work. I have the right guys to do it, and we'll get it done. Temporary power and start plugging into walls. We got the power back up. The biggest trick with MDF cabinets are the edges. You can spray it and it'll basically just disappear. It soaks right in. So what you have to do is actually hit it with a roller or a brush. 
three to four coats to make it really cover, sand in between the coats, and then it'll leave a nice smooth finish. Bulkhead's done. You built a nice little uh, water meter cover. Yeah, it's just something to hide it because the, whoever put it in buried it in the wall. We wanted to actually hide how ugly it was. Okay, so we have all our lines run. We did a drop down tile. Very yep. nice. New lights. I think they're going to like that. New lights. That's nice well safe. Good job. Thank you very much, my friend. Hey, 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 Laura Lee. Hey, Shane, how you doing? We come home. Come on. Up. That's all right. You're going to hold your new hand. I know. I was going to say, this is nice. Really? I like. Can you see how strong that is? 70s. Yeah, how are you? Nice to see you, nice to see you again. Hello. Sir Shane, hey, how are you? Good, good thank you. You know, uh, Keith is so good about these handrails that he was able to use the existing holes. And one of the hardest things you can do is to replace a rail, especially from a metal to a wood. Yeah, right. Is to actually take a good look at it and say, hey, he's tied this in. It doesn't even look like he did anything. Yeah. Guardrail. Okay, new codes, it says a guardrail. This is considered a guardrail, 36 inches high. So, right. and I, I like that. Let's make it stronger, let's make it better. We yeah. do have that little girl in the house mm -hmm. that's gonna be getting bigger. Yes, <laughs> yeah. that's let's true. Let's walk over there. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. I love Hello. I love it. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> it's an actual fire. You know what? It's, it's, it's fire really fireplace, your fireplace. I love it. Uh, we you guys are so awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm getting hate already. <laughs> what they did is instead of putting in a new insert, they actually went in from the top, they went outside, they broke out bricks, they put in this wonderful tool, it's called the beater tool. Now put it down through the chimney, okay, and it'll beat the clay out. So what they did was to pull out the bricks was to remove the debris instead of allowing it to come down and ruin oh, your wow. fireplace. Oh. And then to reinstall a stainless steel insert from the fireplace directly up to a total top to make it right up the code, right, right up the safety issues. Okay. So I'm happy to say your fireplace can be used. Thank you. I love you guys, thank you. <laughs> the house feels like a home now. It feels yeah. like it's just ready to be moved in. We have all new windows throughout the whole oh, first floor of your house. Every single window has a child safety lock. And I oh, really love this and it's really you. simple. You see this little lever right here. You okay. push in that lever, you pull up your top. Okay, and I, this is just the way to do this. Slide your window over, grab your clips, Pull the window out, nice wow. and simple. Clean oh. the inside, clean the outside. Awesome, Shane, that's gonna be so easy for you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and it's as simple as this. Just Add push it over. back in frame, nice and simple. Just push it right back in frame, push it in place, put her over, lock her down. Let's talk about your bathroom. You have two new exhaust fans in your bathroom, so we don't have to worry about mold anymore by the shower. They're quiet. You're going to love it. They don't. Oh, nice. I mean, you can actually hear yourself. He's like, is that fan That's on? Right. Yes. The other one was like an airplane engine, yes. right? I love it to have the people that come in and say, I want to do this. Yeah. You know, Dominic, the window guy, is like, no, we'll do this. We'll do this. You know, add the extra. Steve, you know, Steve Graves coming in and not only yeah. doing, fixing up the fascia to soften, making sure it breathes properly, you do have the ridge vent on the roof. Right. That's the highest point. We love that. Hot air rises, but we got to bring it in from the soffit to allow that air to go out through that ridge vent. Perfect. And he throws in new shutters. I'm thrilled with the front of the house and the oh, rain yeah. barrels being connected up and the shutters being new and gray instead of that hideous green that they were. <laughs> so I mean, we're not the eyesore on the street anymore, which yeah. is really nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay, so all new ceiling, all new yeah. lights. Brought in a whole new line, so this is all new bulkhead. Bringing in that whole new line, oh, making sure good. we have a register in the ceiling. No more cracking instruments. I don't have to uh, have to worry about making sure that the instruments stay in their cases all the time. And, uh, you know, I can do my work and my practicing in peace. You have a brand new panel. That's great. That's wow. Frank, that's Joe, his company, Solutions. I love these guys. They do it right. We had to bring in Hydro. 
Hydro shuts down the power for us. We gotta thank them for yeah. stepping up for the time that we need. Oh, mm -hmm. Shut it down. Put that's in the new great. panel. You remember the post outside? Once where the meter was, yeah. it was yeah. away from the wall. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's not a good thing. That's yeah. a really dangerous thing. That meter's got. That's where all the main power is. So they've resecured that to the wall. The new tags on it. Everything's been passed. DSA's happy about everything, and it looks clean. Now that room is. Perfect. It's got heating, it's got proper electrical in it, it's got a beautiful new light in it. So it can be used for a bedroom, it can be used for an office, it can be used for anything we want because now it's livable, yeah, yeah. which is just amazing. Now let's go to your furnace room. Wow. <laughs> okay, we'll start with this side. Okay. okay. Now you have a proper access panel to get to your drain. Okay. okay. It is now vented through the ceiling, gone up properly, making sure that everything works in here was important. Now that black, you see that in the corner over there? Yeah. yeah. That is the exhaust fan from? That is the exhaust fan from our bathroom fan right here. Oh. So did we put in a new fan here? Absolutely. You are such a good awesome. guy. <laughs> He's a good guy. Well, Thank you. I didn't know he did that, by uh, the way. Oh, is that right? <laughs> so that's a good thing. Now, Dame is doing what I do. He's like, you know, we did these. Do this. So you have a brand new one, which the line runs across here. And the reason it's black is because it's wrapped with insulation. And we want to do that about a few feet from the wall to okay. keep that pipe warm because it's based on an outside pipe. Now, let's look at the furnace for a second. It almost looks like nothing happened, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> almost. No. <laughs> you think no, no, no. a new coily thing. Oh, yeah, very yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bringing in the bros, not only did they run the new line out there, but they put in a new flex line, and now makes it totally safe once again. Now we're safe on electrical, we're safe on a fire, and we're safe on gas. The three <laughs> biggest things, and I'm going to talk about safety in the house. Yeah, yeah. When Craig Lowe came in to paint everything, of course, we're going to use what? Low VOC paint. Right. Thank you. Very yes. important. I don't hear water. I was going to say, it's like a new faucet. It's a little quiet. I don't quiet. Even drip, drip all the time. I was, every time I stepped in this room, I had to go to the bathroom. <laughs> every time I was like, man, I got to pee. <laughs> I don't hear it anymore. Martin, again, not only fixed all the issues up there, but he ran in new shutoffs that we have for the washer, washer oh, machine, wow. new taps, like and we have, most importantly, that prime that comes yes. off to yes. make sure water goes to the trap right. every time you turn on the tap. They did such a wonderful job. We yeah. got so much more than we thought we could. You can actually, you know, in enjoy our time down here together yeah. rather than worrying about, uh, you know, flooding. Yeah. <laughs> it looks wonderful. Yeah. Want to go to the other room? Yeah. Yes. OK. <laughs> no looking yet. No looking? Well, it's, you know what, it's, 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 it's what is it? Ooh. I mean, it looks like, you got a new ceiling. I got a new ceiling. And it's not a drop oh, ceiling. Oh, oh, the ceiling is gone. We but look what else, you have lights. I know. Proper and, lights. And nice lights. Windows are actually being fully used now, if you remember. I, they were I, I can actually off. see the top. I can see so the top. So we just open them up just yeah. a little bit for you. That's nice. Oh, that that's is brilliant. Good. We don't have to sit down here and worry about whether the ceiling's going to cave in on us or, yeah. you know, it just, it's just amazing. So you can turn around, and this oh! is... Oh! I'm never going to get him out of here! <laughs> this is a simple bar. Yeah. Somebody put it up a counter. Yeah. We just did a little bit of love touch. Oh. That's all we did. Oh, now, let wow. me say who did this, because this is important. Okay. My daughter, my son, Sherry and Michael, they actually together designed this. Absolutely. Oh, wow. They actually together built it and then put it in place. The house looks just wonderful. Oh, they just went amazing. above and beyond it's and amazing. we're thrilled. So, we're really thrilled. And to have the nice touch of just the shelves and the, uh, behind the bar yeah. that were done by Mike's kids, yeah. you know, you know, it's uh, pretty special. It's looks added to you. Such a wonderful family room. So yeah. it's gonna be great. We were actually talking about putting in shelves. Uh, Is that right? Yeah, uh, and we at one point in time we, we were like, well, how are we gonna do it and everything else? Cause, uh, you know, where are we going to get them from? Are they going to be nice enough or anything else? But well, we now... have a bet. We have a bet whether they're going to be filled with toys or... Because <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to become a whole <laughs> different room in about 10 years. Cheers. Cheers. Yay, it's done. <laughs> it looks amazing. You guys are awesome. <laughs> and these guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, I'm proud of both of you. I think you did a really good job on this, uh, the bar shelves. I really do. You're getting... Thanks, Bob. <laughs> oh. Love you. Love you. Can't wait. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cute? <laughs>